Do you ever find yourself trying to sleep, but you can't seem to turn your mind off? Today, we're going to continue our coverage of the third major cause of difficulty sleeping, cognitive overactivation. In the last video, I covered something called audio visual entrainment or AVE. Today, we're going to continue our focus on neurological strategies to reduce cognitive overactivation. We're going to cover cranial electrotherapy stimulation or CES. I'm Dr. Chris Friesen from Friesen Performance, where I help you achieve your greatest potential by optimizing your psychology, physiology, and neurology. Today, we're going to cover cranial electrotherapy stimulation, also known as CES. CES involves using extremely small levels of electrical stimulation through the earlobes to affect the brain. CES units have been found to increase alpha waves in the brain. Recall these are the relaxing brain waves. When alpha goes up, we tend to be thinking less, and therefore it reduces cognitive overactivation. It also tends to decrease fast beta waves, which are associated with overthinking. CES units have been found to be efficacious in a number of clinical disorders through clinical studies and RCTs, or randomized controlled trials. It's also been approved through the FDA, or the Food and Drug Administration in the United States, for the treatment of depression, anxiety, and insomnia. There's significant evidence that CES units tend to increase beta endorphins, which tend to reduce pain, and also serotonin, which has been found to reduce negative emotionality and increase your sense of satisfaction. Research has also found that CES units can modestly increase melatonin levels, which I've covered in previous videos, which help us to fall asleep. It also tends to modestly increase GABA levels, GABA is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system or the brain and is the basis for almost all the main types of anti-anxiety medications. There's also evidence that CES units can modestly decrease cortisol levels. Recall that we need our cortisol levels to go down in the evenings in order to sleep. However, CES units can also increase norepinephrine levels, which basically activates us. So this is one of the reasons why we shouldn't use CES units too close to sleep. Relatedly, if you use certain settings on your CES unit, it can decrease the slow delta and theta waves that we want to go up in the evenings in order to fall asleep. The main effect that CES units have on the brain or the EEG is the increase in alpha waves and a decrease in beta waves. People who have trouble with cognitive overactivation tend to have too much beta waves and not enough alpha waves. So this is likely one of the main reasons CES has been found in studies to help with people with insomnia. In other words, it can reduce the mental chatter. Research shows that the improvements in depression, anxiety, and insomnia can take a few weeks to kick in, but usually there's an immediate effect in terms of stress and anxiety. Before using a CES unit, check with your physician, especially if you have any electrical devices implanted into your body, like a pacemaker. Also, at this point, it's contraindicated for women who are pregnant. Some people are understandably a bit hesitant to put electricity through their earlobes into their brains. The research suggests that there are very few side effects. It's supposedly less than 1%, and these people tend to complain of either vertigo or dizziness, a burning sensation on the earlobes where the sensors are, and occasional headaches. So how does one use a CES unit? Well, essentially you just wet the electrodes and put them on your earlobes and you turn the unit on. A lot of people like using it because it's quite easy. The great thing is you can go about your daily business when you have it on. I wouldn't recommend exercising or driving or showering with it on, but generally you can go about your daily business and it's pretty non-intrusive. Sessions usually last between 20 and 45 minutes, usually once per day. There's two main settings. There's a 0.5 Hertz setting and a 100 Hertz setting. Research shows both settings tend to increase alpha waves, the relaxing brain waves, and decrease beta waves. But the 0.5 Hertz setting tends to also decrease more the slower delta and theta waves. So if you're gonna use each of these settings, I'd recommend using the 0.5 Hertz earlier in the day because you need that slow theta and delta waves to increase in the evenings in order to sleep. Or if you're gonna use it later in the day, you could use the 100 hertz setting. With some of my patients and clients, 
And some of them I found near miraculous effects in terms of depression and anxiety especially. And other patients, they seem to have no effect whatsoever. Subjectively, patients and clients tend to report that when they use a CES unit, they feel more calm and relaxed and usually have less negative emotions. I've personally used CES on and off for about 10 years now. The interesting thing is, you notice an almost immediate state change. So I feel a sense of relaxation. I wouldn't classify this as a pleasurable feeling, but there's definitely a reduction in stress and thinking. I can also see how the 0.5 Hertz setting can make some people feel dizzy. It almost feels like you're on a boat that's rocking. This usually goes away after a few minutes though. I usually notice a positive effect on my mood for at least a few hours after I use it. I've also found if I use it too close to bed, especially the 0.5 Hertz setting, it can interfere with my sleep. So I make sure I don't use it past usually maybe five o'clock in the evenings. Personally, I found only a mild improvement in my sleep and it usually doesn't happen unless I use it for a number of days in a row. In the United States, CES units require a prescription by a healthcare professional. In Canada, you don't need a prescription. There are two main units that are sold to the public. One is called Alpha Stim. This is a more expensive unit, but it has more research on it. The Alpha Stim Aid only has one setting. It's a 0.5 Hertz setting. It costs about $840 US or $1,100 Canadian. There's a more expensive version called the Alpha Stim M. It offers the 100 Hertz setting as well. This one costs about $1,300 US or $1,700 Canadian. There are associated costs with Alpha Stim. One is replacing the electrode pads. It costs about $20 every two months. You also have to use conductive gel, which costs about $15 for a relatively large bottle. The main competitor to Alpha Stim is MindAlive.com's Oasis Pro. The Oasis Pro costs $450 US, so it's much cheaper. It has less research on it though than Alpha Stim. Some advantages of Oasis Pro include the fact that it has multiple settings, including the 0.5 Hertz and the 100 Hertz. But there's a bunch of settings in between, but there's not much research on those settings. Also, you don't have to change the electrode pads. They have rubber electrodes that are basically permanent. You just put water on them and you clip them to your ears. In the next video, I'm going to talk about a cheap and safe supplement that may be the key to reducing your cognitive overactivation and improving your sleep. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to get alerted to future videos. So until next time, keep moving forward.